Welcome back to the channel, folks. This is Paul from the future speaking. You may not recognize this space right behind me, but in this video today, that space is occupied by a big pile of wood. I'm happy to say it's all gone now. It's in a house. And I would love to turn around and show you um, how that house looks. No, I'm not gonna do that. You're gonna have to just watch the next four or five episodes as we get that house put together. Uh, it is so exciting. Uh, I know I'm way behind on my video editing. Um, the video you're going to see today is from early July. It's late September already. The trees are starting to turn. Um, but we're, we've been making great progress. It's just the editor who's way behind. Yeah, and that's me too. Anyway, enjoy the episode. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Um, we appreciate you guys. Most of what you see going up behind us is wood that we actually bought a couple years ago. We bought it uh, when the prices had come back down from their astronomical COVID heights and we were uncertain about the pricing in the future. So we did a bulk buy just to lock in the price. Uh, we've been using all that wood and we're over here in the wood pile now. We're just picking up some more sticks of wood, getting ready to take them over and add to some of the walls that we're working on right now. While the concept of buying the wood ahead of time sounds like a great idea, there was a downside to that strategy. Even though we put tarps across the wood pile, water still got into the pile and caused it to become a haven for bugs. As we uncovered the pile and began to transfer wood to the truck, we would occasionally come across a collection of bugs trying to make their home there. Some of the boards even had a slimy coating. I'm not sure what that was from, maybe just sat from the wood, but regardless, we frequently ended up sweeping the wood or spraying the wood with an insecticide or power washing the wood and then drying it in order to get it cleaned up and back to a usable state. In the end, we had usable wood. It just required some additional work. With our ready for cutting wood pile replenished, we're ready to begin cutting studs to length and building walls. We're working on the master bedroom walls today and want to get a sense of how that space is going to lay out. Our first task is to establish the outside walls using 2x6 lumber. We'll follow that up with walls made out of 2x4s for the interior walls. So, uh... One of the things that we've been kind of waffling on is the exact layout of the master suite. We already moved the door so that we could uh, move the pantry um, into its new home. But now we have to think about what are we going to put in this master suite and uh, how big are the spaces going to be. 
I would say let's uh, let's lay out some two by fours on the floor and uh, start playing with spaces and sizes. Okay. So we've got a door coming in here. Let's say that you put counters with sinks along that wall. You're gonna have a wall here, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you gotta come out and then in. Sink there and sink here. Okay. It's just, it's just one thought at this point. I'm, I'm not settled on anything. Maybe we put our shower here. And the toilet next to it. Yeah. We put it right here. We can center the toilet right on the floor joist. Okay. No. Wait a minute. No. <laughs> that took a little while. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> who would do that? Yeah, who would do that? Well, we put up a few exterior walls yesterday. Um, but then we kind of got bogged down trying to decide the final layout of our interior walls here in the master suite. However, after much deliberation, I think we've got a plan. So we're gonna come in here from the main room. So we're coming in from the main room into a little bit of a um, atrium or hallway. Um, there's gonna be one pathway that opens into the main bedroom area here. And the two pieces of plywood represent uh, a king bed that will be sitting there with windows facing out both directions. We're even toying with uh, a little bit of an angle here on the edge. Still thinking about how to do that. Um, but then as you come down uh, this hallway, yeah, it opens up back into, um, there'll be a sauna and <clears throat> master closet, bathroom or toilet room, shower and area for sinks back here. There'll actually even be a doorway through that wall that goes over into the laundry room for easy access to the laundry. So I'm gonna start today by just cutting studs and uh, getting ready. I'm trying to rain me out here. Um, we'll see how that works. So we moved uh, the pantry 
uh, into this space right behind us, which is, um, I think, a better position for the uh, the pantry. It's right off the kitchen and uh, even more right off the kitchen than the old pantry was. But that meant we had to move this door that goes between the laundry room and the master bedroom's uh, bathroom suite. So Karen's over here uh, moving a few studs, uh, getting ready for that new door. Um, we've got a number of things that we're going to be working on today. We had started working on our mas master bedroom and bathroom, um, the layout over here. Um, but as we were uh, put, starting to put some walls up, the question came, are we actually providing enough space for the bathroom and the shower area? Thinking about uh, 10 years from now, when maybe uh, um, uh, we're in a wheelchair or something, wondering whether or not we can actually get a wheelchair in. Um, it's close. So we're thinking about alternative layouts, and we really haven't come up with anything solid yet. Um, and so we are not gonna work anymore on this room today. We are simply going to put it on pause and let our brains think about it in the back of our heads uh, while we work on some other stuff. One of the other things that we could work on is this wall here in, at the back of the kitchen that butts up against the staircase section. Um, we've got some, um, we got a section of the wall that needs to be balloon framed, so it's going to go straight up, not only past that floor system, but even up a little bit higher uh, by about three and a half feet. Uh, so we could uh, work on that. We could work on the, the last section of stairs going up. Um, we've got all kinds of header material, so we could come into these areas where we've uh, left space for windows and doors and actually put the headers in, uh, frame in the jack studs uh, and the window sills, stuff like that. We've got all that that we can work on. And out here in the garage, we have uh, a couple more walls. Karen spent some time this morning um, working on this sill plate. It had gotten kind of dirty um, as we've gone in and out um, of the garage and hopped this wall. So she pulled that green board uh, sill plate um, up and actually swept underneath it. Uh, we actually even have a section over here that uh, got damaged when uh, somebody operating a tractor, he who shall not be named, uh, hit it, bent the bolt. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little bit of repair there. Anyway, we'll probably put this wall up today as well. And um, maybe even put some siding on. That would definitely make the building feel a little bit more solid, less shaky. We have braces that you can see um, around the building in various places. And that definitely does um, provide some measure of uh, support uh, laterally. Keeps the walls um, plumb. Uh, in the direction that they're being braced. But uh, nothing beats putting plywood on there and uh, really make that'll really make it solid. So those are a bunch of the objectives that we have on our short list, things that we can do here in the near term. We'll see how much we can get done. So we got the wall stood up here on this side of the garage down to the door. I ran out of studs though. I've actually got two more we'll probably put in there, but we need a few more to get to the corner. And then we'll have to buy some more um, across the opening here where the garage door is gonna be. We were shifting to do headers and then we realized, oh, the cripples that we have um, to go underneath the beams aren't long enough. So I'm gonna to have to get some 10 footers for the longer cripples. So we're gonna put a pause on that and we're gonna uh, turn our attention over to the staircase. We've got some studs that we balloon framed up. That's where the railing will actually uh, end. That's the height of the railing um, on the balcony. And uh, now we're getting ready to enclose this section of the staircase. Same kind, same kind of concept with uh, studs that go up um, above the deck of the floor and up to the, uh, the top of the hand railing.
Well, we finished the balloon framing on this wall that divides the kitchen from the staircase. Um, we don't quite have enough material to go over to the edge, but I'm not exactly sure how far I need to go over because um, there's a 10, 12 pitch roof that intersects with that wall um, up there. So I may just leave that there for a little while. Uh, it's time to turn my attention to um, the next part of this process which is uh, to go ahead and build the staircase. I've got three of the four uh, sets built. I just need to build this last one that goes from the landing up to the top deck. Well, I got the stringers all cut out and hung. They've turned out pretty good, pretty even. The key there is to uh, cut one and then use that single one as a template for all the others. That's your best chance, I think, of getting them to all turn out. Well, with the stringers in place, I'm ready to start putting down some treads. Well, I got a functioning set of stairs. No more having to use a ladder to get up to the loft. You know, I think that's about all for today's episode. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. We'll see you on the next one.